my kids love to create. In fact, um, in this very room, um, this is our office, uh, my kids have uh, behind us, you know, a whole bunch of artistic art supplies and behind the, the camera on the other side, there's a table full of paints and, and everything. You can see piano uh, that, that, that I play and a guitar and, and we love to create. We love to, to just play around and, and have a good time uh, creating things. And, and I, you know, one of the theologies that kind of captivates me the most is, is this, this theology of creation, this, this creative theology that we create because our God is a creative God. And so we're emulating God's uh, creative activity in our creative work. You know, we're in this series uh, of videos called The Divine Above and, and the, the Divine Below. And we've been looking at how God um, interacts with people, both in his transcendent forms, uh, the way that he's over us, the way he's above us, the way he sometimes we think of him as incomprehensible and majestic, and then how he takes that transcendence and then condescends to be with us. And I, we've been doing that by looking at the creative work of one particular artist. His name is Sufjan Stevens. And so if you haven't seen the first few video lessons, I encourage you to go back and, and see those. And um, Sufjan is primarily considered a musician, but he also is a visual artist as well, which we've talked about a little bit. But the last couple of albums that we've looked at have been primarily, um, well, actually totally, instrumental music. And so uh, you really are, are given the latitude to interpret pretty wildly what the notes uh, that are being transmitted through your, your speakers or through your headphones, um, what they mean. And, and given the, the content or given the context um, in which Sufjan was writing, we've been doing that. We've talked about God's communicative activity um, through the Holy Spirit by looking at how Sufjan unpacked the Chinese zodiac in Enjoy Your Rabbit. Uh, we talked about how, how Sufjan, um, you know, was able to transform the mundane ugliness of uh, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway into both movie and soundtrack and essay and even comic book. And so um, that, was, that was a pretty cool kind of exploration. It's one of my favorite explorations that I've done when I've studied Sufjan Stevens um, and, and that redemptive kind of aspect of things. But as we zoom out, uh, Sufjan's most re uh, recent record, uh, most recent album is actually a collaboration with several other, um, uh, several other artists Obst all contributed to this latest release, which is called Planetarium. And Planetarium was actually a an experimental record that was kind of created first in a live in live settings and then taken to um, to the recording studio just uh, last year. And then this this re latest record, Planetarium, was just released earlier in 2017. And so it's it's Sufjan's most uh, recent uh, record, but it deals with the largest. A topic that you can deal with, and that's the planets. I mean, that's the solar system. That's the cosmos. You know, people have always been fascinated with space. They they fascinated with space, and in ancient times, it was just be it would just be kind of uh, looking at the night sky and formulating mythology based on how the stars were were arranged, and and you get the constellations, which really don't exist except in our imagination. We see patterns in the sky and, and ancients uh, created kind of not just the images, but also the narratives behind the images. And that's essentially kind of what Suchin Stevens has done in Planetarium with the lyrical content of this, of this record. And, um, you know, Diana Butler Bass wrote a book called uh, Grounded. And in this book, she talks about our fascination with the sky. And this is what she writes. She says, to say that God is in the sky is not to imply that God lives in a certain address above the earth. Instead, it, it is an invitation to consider God's presence that both reaches to the stars and wafts through our lives as a spiritual breeze. Uh, Bass actually ties in uh, the, the, the uh, Hebrew and Greek words for wind um, and, and shows how they are also used as translations of God's spirit. 
and, and how the wind and the air and, and, and the, the sky calls us to a heightened sense of the divine. And what Sufjan Stevens does lyrically in uh, Planetarium is to point us to the sky. And he weaves all these different uh, lines of narrative into unpacking um, various aspects of our solar system. And the first track I want you to take a listen to is the track Jupiter um, on Planetarium, and then we'll talk about that for just a little bit. Father of light, Father of death, give 
us your wisdom Give us your graphic solution Jupiter is the loneliest planet Red, right eye, put in its place Under your foot, carpenter's cape Summon of death says Jupiter is the loneliest planet Star failed that you are fevering bitch, figure of speech, summon after says Jupiter is the loneliest So before we actually talk about the music, which I think is pretty great, and uh, talk about the lyrics, which I think are pretty um, remarkable, we should understand that when Stevens is unpacking the solar system, um, just like he, he does with a lot of his work, he doesn't just stick with the particular object, but he deals with a lot of uh, kind of ideas that surround that object. So for Jupiter, for example, it is the largest uh, uh, planet in our solar system, and it's named um, after the Roman version of the Greek god Zeus. So Jupiter was the supreme god in the Roman pantheon of gods and was related to uh, Zeus, who was the supreme god in the pantheon of Greek gods. And Edith Hamilton, back in the 60s, wrote the definitive work on mythology. And it's interesting what she had to say uh, about Zeus, because, you know, in our understanding of Zeus, we just think of he's this, this lightning-wielding sort of god, and he kind of got what he wanted. But this is what she, she writes in, in her book called Mythology, Edith Hamilton. She actually quotes um, Homer's Iliad. In, in Zeus' own self-description, she says, it, it, he says this about himself. He says, I am the mightiest of all. Make trial that you may know. Fasten a rope of gold to heaven and lay hold every god and goddess. You could not drag down Zeus. And yet Hamilton uh, points out that Zeus was not without his numerous faults and foibles. And so Jupiter kind of takes those characteristics on as well. He could be tricked. He could be uh, duped. Uh, he was not omniscient. He, he wasn't omnipresent. And so Stevens, when he's you know, writing these lyrics about uh, Jupiter, the planet, and also the mythology surrounding the name Jupiter, he, he sings this. He says, Father of light, Father of death, give us your wisdom, give us your breath. Summer, Sumner says that Jupiter is the loneliest planet. Red right eye put in its place under your foot, car carpenter's cape. Sermon of Death says Jupiter is the loneliest planet. Floundering star, 
Failed that you are, fevering pitch, figure of speech, sermon of death says Jupiter is the loneliest planet. See, the irony in Stephen's lyrics is that Jupiter, the planet, is the largest in our solar system. And yet, often people have thought of Jupiter scientifically as a failed star, that there's failure uh, built into the idea of Jupiter as a planet. Now, scientists debate whether Jupiter is actually uh, a, a failed dwarf brown planet um, or not, but Stevens jumps on this idea of failure and, and, the, and the foibles and faults of, of Zeus or Jupiter, the Roman version, um, to point out something pretty, I think, spectacular about our attempts to achieve greatness. He says this, he, he ties this idea of fatherhood with Zeus and Jupiter being the father of the gods um, and the father of the heroes in Greek and Roman mythology with his own father. He talks about the curse of, uh, of Adam, labor, and how his father had to work and work and work and work to achieve what he could never quite grasp. He talks about Lucifer in the, in the lyrics. This, this idea that the, the, the fallen angel Lucifer in, in, in Christian mythology tried to grasp after something that he couldn't quite get a hold of. You know, the creation story in Genesis chapter 1, I encourage you to open your Bibles to it if you, if you have it. It's going to be on the screen. And we're not going to go verse by verse through this, but this is beautiful poetry. Beautiful poetry about God's creative work. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And, and, and so begins the cycle, the, the poetic cycle of God's speaking creation into existence. And at every point in the cycle, at every end of the cycle, he says, it is good. His creation is good. He achieves exactly what he sets, sets out to do. And yet, our achievement to be like God, it falls short. In Genesis chapter 11, just 10 chapters after this, human beings try to achieve something great apart from their relationship to God. And, and this is what it says in, in Genesis chapter 11. It says, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. Now, I want to stop right there. When we read that the whole earth had one language and the same words, we think, oh my gosh, this unity. I mean, we live in a time of terrible division, and we're thinking, it would be so amazing if we just kind of get together and be unified. And yet this is what the people did with their unity. It says, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said oh, to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the whole face of the earth. You see, what happens is the people get together and their desire is to reach the heavens. Apart from any kind of intervention of God themselves, they try to reach the heights of God. They try to reach this kind of mythical, um, fantastical summit of heaven apart from God. And as the story continues, God comes down to see this great tower. The tower is so wonderful that even God has to descend and condescend to even see it. And they're frustrated in their attempts to reach these great heights. You know, even the, the solar system, as marvelous as it is, it points us to God. But then our stories that we put on top of it only indicate our frustration with trying to achieve power apart from God himself. You know, in another... Uh, song on planetarium is the song Mars and I want you to go ahead and stop and, and just take a listen to this uh, this song from the, this, the, the album Planetarium
song Mars is is about the planet I think that most human human beings have been fascinated with probably more than any other. We kind of we're always fascinated with visitors from Mars and trying to get to Mars. One of my favorite movies is is Matt Damon's uh, The Martian. I, I just think that's a great movie, um, and it's a fascinating look at what if we actually got there. And that's probably you know if we're getting to another planet, that's probably the one that we're getting to first. You know, I'm not no scientific data, but I, I do enough you know watching uh, of the space program to know that's where they're headed, and and it, we're fascinated by it because you know. To some extent, it's relatively close, I guess, as, as planets go to us. Um, but it's it's red. It's it's kind of got this fiery look, but it's got a solid surface that we can land on. We've done a lot of you know pre exploration for it, and yet it's named after um, Mars. You know, the Roman equivalent of the god Ares, the Greek god Ares, and, and Mars is the god of war. I think it's pretty amazing that that the the planet that we're most fascinated with, Mars, is named after the god of war. And how violent are we? You know, in this song, Sufjan begins to um, unpack uh, this fascination with war. He, he says this, I am the god of war. I reside in every creature. Dispose of the future or put away your sword. And the problem is set uh, against this question, will we see the Lord? You know, as the song shifts musically, Stevens begins to offer up a possible solution to this fascination with war. And he talks about love and, and, and how love can kind of bring people together. But at the same time, in the lyrics, you'll notice that love can also be and often is the most ready excuse we have for war. It's love of country. It's love of freedom. It's love of democracy. It's love of our way of life. You know, it's it's love of religion, you know, in, in certain cases. I mean, the Crusades were predicated on a love for the Holy Land and, and, and the desire to reclaim it out of a love for religion. And so we have this, this sort of push and pull with love being the great antidote to war and sometimes its biggest motivating factor. Even our love is tainted. Even our love is tainted. This is a theme that, that Sufjan Stevens unpacks in, in other songs on Planetarium from Venus to Saturn, especially Saturn. And uh, I encourage you to go and find that, that uh, video on YouTube and, and see how it relates to that idea of Mars. Um, you know, I think the questions that we really have to wrestle with is, you know, what are we trying to achieve in our creative efforts? You know, as God has achieved life, and then even in, in the face of death, he's, he's given us new life in Jesus Christ. What are we trying to achieve in, in our efforts? And what can we learn about God's relationship to us in our successes? You know, God is this great and awesome and majestic and powerful creator, this creative maker God. And he calls us to also create and make and, 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 and be transformers of our surroundings. But to what end? Will it lead to something great that brings people together, that unifies people, that points people to God's great work? Or will it lead to more war, more division, more hatred? You know, in the time right before um, this record planetarium was going to be released. Sufjan Stevens put up um, what looked like a photograph of the Genesis 1 account of God's creation. And it made me think um, on his website, sufjan.com, and it made me think, you know, what kind of creative beings are we? You know, are, are we good at, at creating loveliness, goodness, hope, beauty? something eternal that will last. I hope you'll think about that and that you will join us next time for The Divine Above and The Divine Below.